Hey, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Astra Militarum uh, Index because I've had a chance to really go through it. I've played a few games with it um, and I just kind of want to share my thoughts on everything. I've already done this video but it was like almost two hours long and uh, I just I didn't like it the way it was sounding. Uh, I think I was just getting tired halfway through and it was it was too much. So what I've done is um, gotten rid of that and I'm going to go through this again but I'm going to break it into sections and I'll do this in parts um, probably I'm going to try to <coughs> uh, try <coughs> sorry probably I'm going to try to break this down uh, into sort of sensible chunks like I'll go through the rules at the start and like the HQ choices and then the uh, the troop choices or battle line and then I'll go into like elites and probably fast attack, mix them together, and then go down to the heavy support, and then finally the other stuff. Um, so it's going to be a few videos, and I apologize if the flow isn't as good as someone like, you know, one of the better, more known YouTube personalities who can go through the entire thing in one sitting. I just, I don't know, it's not for me, at least not yet, I don't think I'm there, so... Anyways, I'm going to get on with it now, and uh, yeah, thanks for listening ahead of time. So, the Astra Militarum, Imperial Guard, this is my main army, and I've shown off many things I've worked on, my Cadian 122nd, uh, my Vostroyans, who are at this point, they are now officially the Vostroyan Death Corps, um, because, you know, I need Death Corps troops apparently, and... I own Vostroyans, I don't own Death Corps, and it just works out perfect, because they're very different from my Cadians. And, yeah, they are, they're my favorite army. Um, this goes back to how unique they've always felt, and while the uniqueness of the army is sort of um, questionable at this point, in many ways, they still feel like the Imperial Guard in many other ways so i think anyone who is a long time fan of this army of this faction you're gonna find stuff here that you like um after space marines and maybe competing with like orcs i'm guessing we're probably the most um like varied and spoiled faction because we just have so many options to pick from it and i don't mean like you know and I'm going to say this right now, Space Marine players don't have real, um, you know, true options. What they have is a variety of the same guy in different suits. Ours um, sometimes might feel the same, but they actually are not just literally um, different types of officers. So... I don't know. I feel like we're a little more spoiled. Until we get to tanks, um, the way they've broken it down this time is a little strange, but we'll get into that. So, getting right into the rules now, I'm going to carry on going through this, like I said, into the HQ. So, the voice of command is our our army rule, and this is basically just orders. Uh, we've had these since, I believe, 5th edition, and they've worked a variety of ways. They've had a point where you had to pass leadership tests. Um, you've had a point where it was just, you know, a free option, and we've gone from having a few orders to having infantry orders and tank orders, infantry orders, tank orders, and uh, prefectus orders, which, which are ones from commissars, and they've boiled it down to a list of six. Now, personally, I am not a fan of how I feel like a lot of the flavor is slowly being eroded from 40k. Uh, they're boiling a lot of stuff down. But um, I did not use all 18 orders in the last book. And I doubt I even used half of them. And I'm not saying that they were all utterly worthless, but they were so niche at times that the situation for them might not come up. This is just six very useful orders. There might be a couple that I wish we could have back. I'm not going to get into that, though, because wish listing isn't going to help here. We'll see what the real codex looks like maybe next year, maybe at the end of 10th edition. Who knows? Um, we'll see how GW decides to treat us this time. So anyways, you have an officer. It could be a foot officer. It could be a tank officer. It could be a special character like Lord Solar. 
they each have a number of orders they can give out and a list or uh, more sorry just a selection of unit types they can give it to usually it's just going to be um the regiment or the squadron like you're basically your 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 soldiers or your tanks um most of them just can basically select one type and that's what they can give it to after that you'd li literally pick a unit within 6 inches unless you have an an ability that stretches that and you just pick the one you want to give them. Each officer can give so many orders out. These do not bounce like they did in ninth edition. Um, so at times, this is not as good. Um, but overall, I do also think that we were a little bit spoiled with that. I think that was one that had it lasted another year, uh, people like myself might be a lot more frustrated losing the bounce. Only having it for a little bit... Um, it was a nice change up from how things have been working. Being only able to give to one unit, um, other than through abilities, again, is just fine. I mean, at the end of the day, it's not a bad thing to have to actually think about what you're going to give out because I admittedly was very lazy in many ways because uh, GW let me be lazy. I just could say, oh, I want this really good bonus and this really good bonus and bounce it through my whole army and... I honestly often didn't need my orders. I just needed one order, you know, per table half almost. So this isn't a bad swap. Anyways, move, move, move. You get to just add three inches to the move characteristic. It used to be a little bit better. It was like add two inches, but also like you can advance six inches just automatically. Um, I do wish that it was three inches plus maybe three inches advance or die six uh, an extra die six advance or something, probably just three inches. Um, three inches of move guaranteed bonus and three inches of um, advance bonus would be nice. Because I don't think three inches feels like a lot, um, a bonus. It means your guardsmen are going from six to nine inches, or your vehicles are going from like, uh, like it's usually 10 or 12 up to like 13 to 15 in most cases. And it's not bad. I mean, three inches can make a difference, but I think six inches and then giving up shooting, um, I think that would have more impact because uh, you'd A, have to think, do I want to give up shooting? But you'd also be able to really actually use this for um, surprise movements. You know, someone might know you can do it, but they might not expect you to actually make that, you know, distance between you um, and the objective. So, next we have Fixed Bayonets. This is just a flat plus one um, to the weapon skill of the melee weapons in the unit. And, I mean, will I use it very often? No. Uh, this is one of those ones that I think is the you know le least likely to get used in most games. Because we're a shooting army, not a combat army. But, having plus one to hit sometimes might help. I don't think it's worth doing against, say, Space Marines. This isn't an older edition where... Me going from weapon skill 3 to 4 means that they're not hitting me on 3s. This doesn't affect the enemy anymore. This is not. This is 8th you know, and on addition. This is how it works now. This just makes me better. And if I'm just punching space marines, um, there's, a better, or, or there's a better order to give out. But if I'm fighting uh, Tau, if I'm fighting um, even maybe Tyranids, it's maybe worth it just to get that extra number of hits because it's not as hard to wound the enemy and their armor save isn't so good that you can just expect them to you know shrug it off take aim this is going to be probably the most used it's again just a flat bonus of plus one but to our ballistic skill most guardsmen hit on fours this means we hit on threes um this can really stack well when you're using things like indirect fire artillery units, um, which I fully expect us to get hit with some nerfs on those as far as points go. Because I can take a Manticore for 105, I could take um, a Field Ordnance Battery for 100, and as heavy, they hit on 5s usually some of these, or 4s if they're vehicles, and if you don't move you get plus 1. So a Manticore going to 3s, um, and then this will be plus one for twos. This is also very good for uh, tanks because again, you need to hit and you're going to give this to your best units first, I think. So an infantry, squ an infantry squad of 20 guys with a couple of LAS cannons, a couple of plasma guns, 
It's a good choice for infantry side because you're going to be hammering into um, their better infantry. Or you're going to be shooting at vehicles with those last cannons and plasma guns. Trying to knock some wounds off. And, you know, the opportunity to have a better chance to hit is really good. And, yeah, this is this is probably the best order. But I when I say that, I mean it's the one that you're going to use the most. That's going to be followed probably by first rank fire, second rank fire. It's a little more situational. What this does is it gives you plus one um, attacks to any weapons that have rapid fire. This is not a bonus to rapid fire, though. This is a bonus to the attack. Um, so weapons are broken into rapid fire as uh, rapid fire X, which is the number of shots you get at half range added. So if it was like, say, rapid fire one, at half range you get plus one. And then there's standard attacks, which for like things like las guns, plasma guns, it's usually just one. It means now that those have two. So this goes into our detachment rule, which I'll get into in a moment. But basically our detachment rule is um, looking for sixes. If you're shooting at something where it's better just to fish for those sixes, this might be better. Um, hitting a tank with a las gun is pretty much useless. So getting plus one to hit is not a benefit to you. But hitting on a 6, where you would automatically wound it, so you skip the wound roll, that actually is a really powerful ability. And I think that you just need to look at the situation. So again, I'm probably not shooting a las gun at a tank, but if I have to, or if I'm going to, this is the order I want, because it's doubling my chances for 6s uh, to auto-wound. Then we have Take Cover. This one here, I think, actually is, um, in terms of utility, might be the best one. Because our guys are not very tough. And when things are coming to hit us, it might be worth throwing plus one um, save onto our units. That's, sorry, that's what this one does. This one's plus one to your save. Can't get better than three plus. So guardsmen go to four plus. Like caster can go to three plus. This is good. Um, I've used this one a couple of times now, and it's gone, taking me from basically, um, I am losing, you know, most of my guys pretty much guaranteed to, I can save half of them, um, a 33% loss to a 50% loss, sorry, 33% uh, save to 50% save, sorry, is a pretty big deal, um, and if you combine it with the take cover or go to ground with, I forget what the stratagem is called for another plus one. You really can get infantry to a three plus or if they're in cover, they're already going to go three plus. It's a really nice um, way to make your units more durable. We don't have a lot of ways to do that uh, because most of our men are not durable. They're not tough. They're just there to um, soak up fire and put out volumes of shots that are high enough that we can hopefully uh, remove units. So sometimes you might just need to keep something alive, whether because you know a charge is coming um, and it would otherwise, you know, deplete your unit too much, or you're about to get hit with some rapid fire from something that you know is AP zero. And you're just like, well, I, I'll save extra dudes this way. I'm going to take a lot of wounds, but I'd rather save more guys and uh, have them still on this objective. The last one is duty and honor. This one here, um, I, I'm betting a lot of people are going to disagree with me and say this one's a lot better just because it's a bonus to leadership and objective control. Um, and I won't disagree that it's very strong. Our leadership is poor at 7 plus, the way leadership works in 10th edition. You roll two dice and you want to roll higher than, or equal to or higher than your, your battle shock score, your leadership score. I mean, so guardsmen are basically 7 plus across the board. As soon as half the men or half the wounds are gone, um, it's like 50-50. They're not going to work anymore. They're just going to stop doing stuff. Um, so it's uh, better better than 50-50, to be honest, if they're not going to do anything. So getting down to a 6-plus is um, it's nice. It's going to um, you know, keep your men scoring. 
and it's going to keep them available for stratagems and whatever else you lose you don't lose because you're not battle shocked and being battle shocked is very bad um you know we thought it was bad when guys ran away we thought it was bad when uh, whole units would run you know back in older editions having your units sitting there in the open because you moved them off to an objective and now they're not even going to score that objective uh you've not only not gotten the points you've left them out in the open for nothing they've gone combat ineffective and you could be facing that every single turn so this one's good plus one to leadership and also their objective control goes up by one so if, as long as you stay um you know not battle shocked plus one can be really helpful you've lost 10 guys out of your 20 oh no you're battle shocked um or you've lost 11 i think it's 11 actually you have to lose so you're down to nine which would normally, if they stay, have 18 objective control left. Now they have 27. Uh, 27 objective control isn't a huge amount um, overall in this edition, but it's still a really good amount of objective control. Uh, 10 space marines are not going to take it from you in most cases, I wouldn't think. Um, yeah, moving on. Detachment rule, again... It's 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 looking for sixes, and it only works if you don't move. That's actually a huge, um, a huge nerf to this uh, ability. It was very strong, but I think they overcorrected. They corrected a lot of the stuff that was very strong. I think Born Soldiers in Ninth Edition, where it was simply every shot you make is an automatic um, hit or sorry wound if you roll the six. Now moving it down to only getting an automatic wound when you roll a 6 if you don't move. Not as good, uh, obviously, but it's also a lot worse because we don't have all those bouncing orders. Um, and because things are less lethal overall, it's not as big a deal when a bunch of las guns um, throw extra wounds on stuff. Because, you know, one or two extra wounds could mean a big thing when we had lots of tanks and lots of heavy weapons scattered around. You know, one or two, three wounds might be enough to finish off um, a heavy vehicle. We don't have as much firepower. Our firepower is not as accurate because we can't just bounce plus one to hit and reroll ones and stuff like that around. Um, and when we do get plus one to hit, take aim. I forgot to mention this. In ninth edition, it was plus one to hit and also minus one AP. We're not getting all that stuff now. I really think Games Workshop needs to go back to this and they just need to change it to... Lethal hits on a 6 again. Um, automatic wound if you roll a 6 to hit. I don't think that is overpowered in this edition. Yes, it's going to be very good for some weapons. But the weapons that it's really good for almost always have high strength anyways. Um, Laz Cannon's auto wounding on a 6 is nice. But a, auto, a Laz Cannon auto wounding on a 6, um, it's not just, you know... Oh, wow, you know, I was unlikely to make that wound roll anyways. You were probably going to make a wound roll of 3+, plus in most cases, 4+, plus for others. And very seldom would it be 5. So again, I don't see that one being um, a necessary hit that we took. We took a lot of hits in this book. I don't think that was one that we needed. I really hope Games Workshop reconsiders that um, as time goes by. We're going to scroll down here. So we have... Oops. Uh, enhancements. These are our new relics. Um, one of the major problems with relics in 9th edition, and even 8th edition, was they were just a choice. You gave up a CP often at the start of the battle, or more than a CP, depending how many you took, and you got some item. And there was a big list, you know, we'd have like a dozen of these things to pick from, or more. We now have four. Um, this, I think, enhancements are a good... Uh, place to point at when we can say Games Workshop made a good change but then went too far. Making them cost points was what we needed with our 9th edition codexes. Some of these um, items were much better relics than others. Um, getting a CP back on a 5+, plus, that's always strong. But at the same time, it's obviously not considered so strong that all of our infantry don't have that, which we'll see below. But, 
having um, Gatekeeper, the special battle cannon, which is one strength higher and does an extra three guaranteed hits. So it was die three plus six or six plus die three shots versus a standard, which was six or three plus die six, however you want to say it. This here is going down to four items. They're okay. They're some of them are better than others, but overall, um, they're a lot less interesting because we lost so many options. Uh, the armor of Graf Tashenko, which would give you a plus one to your wounds and a two plus save, I think it was, on your uh, leader, your warlord, or whoever you gave it to. Um, the, uh, again, that gate crasher, which I think would be very nice to see a better battle cannon option for um, tank commanders. I think if that was a tank commander only item, which because of how this works, it would be, is is my reading. Um, I I really think that would help a lot because um, you know, just overall we've lost a lot of um, lethality like everybody has, and. We just have a few little small bonuses here, which I don't think are that great overall. So let's just go through them really fast, just so I can stop rambling about how kind of annoyed I am. Because overall, it's fine. It's just, it, again, overcorrected. So Death Mask of Olanius. Officer uses this. These all go to officers. Um, this is not like some of the others, like the Eldar, who were like, this is for a Psyker, this is for an Eldar, or whatever. Um, these are only officers. So... Death Mask of Alanius, the unit that the uh, officer with this is in, is um, only at minus one to their objective control when they're battle shocked, instead of going to zero. I am not saying that this is bad, um, but it's also an item you're taking that doesn't actually make you better, it only makes you better if you're in a bad position. Um, when you're battle shocked, I believe that's because you've lost half your guys. Um, an officer means there's at least 21 models in the unit, so you've lost like... <coughs> Sorry, you've lost uh, like 11 models or 12 models. I think 11. Yeah, 11 models would take you under. Losing 11 guardsmen isn't a big deal um, normally, but it's also not hard to get to either, so, you know, it's one of those things where I guess when I say it's not a big deal, you just kind of accept that it's going to happen. Going from OC of 20 plus, or sorry, 40 plus, down to like 11 or 12, um, that's, it's fine if, you know, you're just sitting out in the open and nobody's trying to take the objective from you. But there's better ways to keep your guys in the game than this, I think, um, this is 10 or 15 points. It's... <coughs> Sorry, I just need to take a drink for a moment. Uh, so yeah. Again, this is an item that you're basically buffing a unit that's at it's on its last legs. And once this guy loses it, I don't think you can go join new units. I think he's just stuck on his own. Um, even if he could go join a new unit, um, and I'm misunderstanding that rule... You'd have to get him to the new unit to join. I don't think this is a good item. Um, situationally, it's nice, but I don't like to take stuff where I'm relying on being in a bad spot, and this is going to help me. Unless it's a very significant bonus that really offsets the damage or the losses I've taken. Uh, this one here only mildly offsets it. Again, going from like 40 plus um, objective control down to like 11, 12 objective control, 13 depending how many officers and stuff you have in the unit. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to get excited about that. Uh, drill Commander. This one here, this again is just like our, our detachment rule of lethal hits if you don't move. It would be good if it was just lethal hits. We can easily sit still. I can give this to an officer who's with a heavy weapons um, infantry squad. You know, 20 infantry, a couple of plasma guns, a couple of LAS cannons. Since this game um, really 
is going to punish people who don't maximize uh, damage potential in their lists and their units. This has a very obvious spot to me. Um, I Obviously, you could give it to a tank, but I don't think it's worth it because a tank is going to get one shot from its weapons or, you know, however many shots it gets, but it's just one unit. Um, and those ones you often want to be moving anyways. This one here um, is good for the LAS guns. Again, it's not that great for the LAS cannons. It's okay for the plasma guns, though. Getting that critical hit on a 5 plus is a good bonus. But it's not a great bonus because you can't move. This very much limits your mobility. This is a game about objective taking. Um, I have not seen anything yet that suggests that we're going to anytime soon see objectives where we are looking for kills over objectives until I see the card deck and find something different. I mean, I know there's secondary objectives, um, but the main primary objectives are the control points. It's the actual objective markers on the table that you have to get to. And yes, you could take these guys uh, infantry who set it on objective and if it's uh, out in the open they still get covered because that's their rule uh, if you take the infantry squad and they don't move all game they have perfect fire lanes and that's fine like you could do that but they're still sitting out in the open and being always in cover you know so their five plus becomes a four plus um well i mean if they're causing that much damage they'll just They'll just focus those guys down anyways. If they say, oh, well, you know, those 20 guys keep uh, doing first rank fire, second rank fire. They're getting like 28 uh, las gun shots, and that's too many sixes. And now, it's not, now it's too many fives. They're just going to kill that unit. Um, you're just making them a target. And if you're moving them, you don't get the benefit. So again, um, and this thing's like 15 points, I want to say. Or 20. I mean, it's maybe it's 20. This one, it, it's too expensive, anyways, for what it does. It's like a five point upgrade for me. Um, I think all these are overpriced. I think most of them are worth like five points. Maybe, uh, well, the first two at least aren't worth a lot. Like five points, and that would have been fair. Um, I could see it. Not for the points they're asking um, when this game, you're either short 10 points to make something now, or you're. Um, you know, looking to fill like 80 points, in which case this doesn't help you either way. Um, Kurov's Aquila, this one, if it wasn't 40 points to run this, would be absolutely, you know, no brainer, take this one. But it's 40 points, it costs way too much, and I just really don't. I don't see the use in most games. I, I do think if I was a, like, you know, a tournament player, this would be a lot more interesting to me. I play for fun. And this has been an ongoing problem since 9th, 9th edition. I feel the game is focusing on tournament play. Um, you know, how do they balance? They look at tournaments. How do they produce new rules? They look at what the tournament scene needs. And I think that's where this comes in. At 40 points... You can once per battle, when an object, when an, oh, sorry, when an opponent uses a stratagem, say, "Oh, that one now costs plus one CP for the rest of the game." Um, that's really powerful. Oh, you used a battle, sh or, uh, sorry, uh, a command reroll, plus one uh, cost. Now the command reroll is two. That could be a huge deal. I've watched enough of the battle reports on YouTube over the last couple of weeks from the top type of you know meta chasing players. And I can see how often they use that and how often this would be a huge hit. Um, or, in our case, face off another guard player and he uses the uh, reinforcements, which is expensive at two. Now reinforcements, which we'll get to in a minute, is three. So, yeah, 40 points, too much. Maybe 20 points would be too little. I don't know. But I do think this is something that, in a friendly game... Um, I don't see myself using it, you know, very often. In general, I don't find these very good. I think it's also because I play Eldar, and the Eldar ones are so much 
better and so much more useful uh, just outright in every way that I think these are super bland um, and just like these are uninspired. Games Workshop did a very, very poor job with our enhancements. And I think as I look at the other armies, I see a lot of um, mixed options and we are on the lower end in my opinion. Now, Grand Strategist, this one's the best one. Um, without a doubt, Grand Strategist is the one I think you want in every single list because we have less orders to give. Um, everybody who had two orders went down to one for the most part. Um, and it's also harder to get certain types of orders, like specifically tank orders. Tank orders went from like, oh, I can put out a tank order for like 170-ish points to I can put out a tank order for 240 points. I think a tank commander with Grand Strategist is, if you're using tanks, pretty much um, a must-use. He's already very expensive. A few more points is not going to really change that. It's not going to break your list, I wouldn't think. But it's going to make your army so much better. Because again, we don't bounce our orders. And our vehicles are not squadrons of three, meaning... I can only ever affect one tank. So being able to make that tank um, order stretched two orders is awesome. Stratagems. So um, we have six. Half of them are expensive. Um, I noticed that as well looking at the Eldar. They didn't feel as expensive. I think there's like one of them that costs two points, maybe two. Um, three of ours cost two command points, and now you only get um, one command point per command phase, meaning one on yours and one on your opponent's. You don't start with any. Uh, so some of these, like half of these, we can't use until the you know the second half of the game. And if you go second, that means that um, on the first, during their turn, Three of these are not available to you unless you have a way to get more CP. And to me, that's a little bit feel bad um, to have three that you can't use just right off the bat, especially uh, reinforcements. If you have a really bad turn one or just simply they target the unit that you really don't want to lose um, because that's the one they know they have to get rid of. You have no way to stop them from killing it um, probably because, you know, even though the game is less lethal, it's still quite lethal. Um, and then also, again, they just you don't have the CP to bring them back. So, I don't know. I, I feel like I get why they're 2 CP, but then it does make certain characters, I feel like, kind of mandatory. So, um, I, I think in general there's some kind of like iffy rule writing here uh, that really just forces your hand to play a certain way. But that's a different uh, part of the, of the review. So... Reinforcements, this one here, any phase, you pick a regiment when it dies, and you get it back for 2 CP. It goes into strategic reserves, and if it dies, you lose any characters attached. Uh, you don't get them back, but you get those 20 Krieg back, you get your 10 Kasserkin back. It's it's high value. Um, you're getting your units back, and they go to strategic reserve, which could wind up with them in a really good position when they come back. Um, so that's really swingy, strong uh, command. Or a stratagem, I think. Then we have... Uh, suppression Fire. So, this one here. This one's 1 CP. It's your shooting phase. And you pick an Astro Militarum Infantry unit that's not been selected to shoot. And one enemy unit, excluding, excluding monsters and vehicles. And if your Astro Militarum unit scores one or more hits against that enemy unit this phase until the end of your opponent's next turn, each time a model in that enemy unit makes an attack, subtract one from the hit roll. Basically shoot them enough and they will keep their heads down. Um, it kind of sucks that it doesn't affect monsters and vehicles. Um, maybe the vehicles I get, but you know, I guess the idea of keeping a monster back would be nice. If there is a very killy infantry unit, making them uh, minus one to their hit rolls, really powerful. Um, that means marines and such are going from a hitting on threes to hitting on fours. That can make a big difference, especially when you pair it with, say, bonuses to your save. You can very much limit how much damage they do. 
Suppression Fire, I like that one a lot. Um, it's a direct effect on an enemy unit. Fields of Fire, also 2 CP. Uh, this one, again, really good, but you can't use it till, you know, basically turn 2. Um, or the very bottom of turn 1, which, again, if you go first, that's fine. But if you don't go first, you're not using this till turn 2, and that, again, kind of sucks because you might have lost something that you really would have liked to use this on. Your shooting phase, pick a regiment or a squadron unit uh, that hasn't shot yet, and they pick a enemy unit that was targeted by one or more of those attacks, and everybody else um, who is shooting at them, who isn't um, battle shocked, and this includes regiment or squadron, they get to have one better AP. So um, I think a really good way to use this is on. Um, either medium, light vehicles, or heavy infantry, and then just light them up with las guns. You're getting rid of something that you otherwise would have a little bit more difficulty getting rid of, and just having that extra AP can really help, um, because there's not much AP left in the game. Everything went down by basically one, and there's a lot less ways to get AP uh, bonuses, so this is a this is pretty solid. Expert Bombardiers, 1 CP, pick an Astra Militarum unit with a Vox Caster and 1 enemy unit that they can that can, uh, that they can see. And your indirect fire weapons get plus 1 to hit. That's big. Um, indirect fire is minus 1, so this just cancels that out. And because our indirect fire is almost always um, heavy... That means that they're also going to get a further plus one because they probably didn't move. So, you know, um, you're hitting on plus one because it's heavy uh, with the uh, Bombast field gun. And you don't lose minus one. So you don't just basically stay at um, a five plus to hit. So quite strong. Uh, the ones that are already a four plus now go down to three plus. You can do a lot of really powerful stuff. Uh, with this one, and our uh, indirect fire currently, until they nerf it, I think it's going to happen. Um, it's probably the best stuff we have for just doing kind of like consistent long-range damage. Uh, next, we have Inspired Command, again, 1 CP. After one of your officers does an order in the command phase, gives out an order, you can... Um, or sorry, sorry, <laughs> I misread this one, and I'm misthinking it. Basically, this is one where you can, during any phase, give out an order like it's command phase. Point is, though, an officer can give out an extra order. Um, I wish we had more orders to give out sometimes, but, you know, in a pinch, this can be super useful. You're about to get shot, you're about to get charged, whatever, plus one to saves. Um, or again, you know, something kind of like not super great's coming to fight you. But just uh, it might be worth having that plus one to um, to hit when you're in combat. It, it's not bad. I mean, like this this is a good order. Or sorry, a good stratagem to get more orders. And again, getting more orders is always good. Um, armored might. This one here, two CP again. This is the last expensive one. So one of your vehicle units in your army that was selected as the target of one or more attacking um, units attacks until the end of the phase. Each time an attack is allocated to your, to your unit, you subtract one from the damage characteristics characteristic of that attack. Uh, it's been clarified that is now to a minimum of one, so you can't just go to zero damage. But um, you have a tank that's out in the open, and you're going to get hammered. You know, like you've pushed up your Rogal Dorn. And it's in a great position. It's got multi-meltas. It's got meltas. It's got its oppressor cannon. And you know next turn, as long as this thing is still alive, as long as it's got like, you know, seven wounds left, I think it is, um, and it's not basically losing one to hit, you are going to do some massive damage. You can now lower the damage of all their two damage weapons to one. Uh, two damage weapons probably don't have super high um, AP, what's happening is simply you are just now limiting the number of wounds you take as those multitude of shots get through. 
Uh, that's a really good option, uh, especially on a thing like a Royal Adored, which has the ability to also make certain attacks just down to zero once per game, or all attacks. Um, a specific attack. We'll get to that one later anyways. Now into the HQ options. We are getting near the end of this video. As you can see, it's quite long. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, Lord L Solar Leontis. This guy here is our big epic hero dude. He rides a horse. He has a big sword. He's got, you know, good stats for a guardsman. He, he moves fast because he's on a horse. He's got four toughness, a three plus save. He has eight wounds. That's really nice. I assume that's mostly just his horse, which is like half robot. Uh, leadership of six plus. That's really nice. Uh, again, we don't have a lot of good leadership. So having a guy that essentially has space marine leadership that can get into a unit and keep them there longer is good. OC is only two, but, you know, he's also at least OC two, just another two points in your unit of 20, you know, bringing you to 42. Uh, his weapons, he's got a pistol, which has two attacks, and they're eight strength, minus two AP and two damage. It's not, you know, a gun that's going to knock out a tank usually. It might pick off the last wound or two, but it will shoot down some uh, marine type, you know, marine equivalent options. Um, unless they have damage reduction that just outright kills, you know, one or two intercessors, which isn't too bad. You know, if you get lucky and kill two intercessors with this, um, and then the rest of the guys get involved, you could wipe out a squad of marines, and uh, that's a good trade. But it's at 12 inches, so you're also kind of not in the best place. This guy is not supposed to be in combat as far as I'm concerned. His value is not that. Uh, he does have horse hooves, a couple of attacks. They're fine. You know, it's just extra attacks, so it's nice, but they're not going to do the work. And then he has a sword. The sword's quite good. Um, you do get six attacks, the hit on two plus, strength six, AP minus two and two damage. Um, if you do get charged by some tougher units like Marines, uh, things like that. Doing two damage, that's at minus two. This guy here might help you uh, really kind of balance the playing field. <coughs> so he's a leader, obviously, so we can join a unit to be protected. He has orders, and specifically he has three orders. Um, he can give out to anybody. Most units have to give out their orders to either infantry or like regiment um, or squadrons, your vehicles. He can just give them out to three units, uh, and that's really nice. He's also going to give you one extra CP on your command phase. So instead of getting one and then one, one and then one for five turns, you're going to get one and two, one and two, one and two. And getting that extra command point every turn, every battle round, that could actually give you a really solid um, buffer to um, basically just not have to worry as much about how you use them. This is a very finite resource. you got to be careful with them. You don't have to be as careful, so that's nice. And also, at the start of the turn, Collegiate, Astrolex, or sorry, start of the game, pick three of your units after both of you have deployed, and you can redeploy them anywhere on the in your deployment zone or in strategic reserves, um, even if you already have filled your strategic reserves. So this could be a... Um, a combo option. And then he's got a 4 plus involve, so that's nice too. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, he can join Rough Riders and all of our in ma main infantry units. So he's got lots of options for who he wants to go with. I think everyone's sort of in agreement that Death Corps is a good option just because of how tough they are, uh, just to keep him alive. Uh, next we have Ursula Creed, daughter of the famed Ursicar E. Creed. And she is basically just him, uh, really just in terms of model and everything about her. And she has his pistols. They're, you know, decent. They're, they're going to, you know, better than 50% chance of wounding space marines. Uh, she has plenty of attacks with them. She's just running, at, run, run, she's just running around guns akimbo um, at 12 inches. If they were too damage, she would be... A short-range powerhouse, I think. But they're only one damage, which is fair. Um, melee weapons. She has, she has power weapon. These power weapons are all the same. Four attacks, uh, in her case. Three plus to hit. Four strength, minus two AP, and a damage. 
So she can give out two orders to regiments. Uh, she cannot order tanks. That's a shame. I really wish she had squadrons just because she is a special character. Um, while she leads a unit, the unit can be affected by up to two different orders at the same time. That's pretty powerful. First rank fire, second rank fire, and plus one to hit. Um, that's solid. Then, Tactical Genius. Once per battle round, um, a unit within 12 inches can be targeted with a stratagem for zero CP, even if you've already used it. So, um, this is kind of maybe better than what um, the Lord Solar gives, because he gives you one extra CP per battle round. She's going to give you an extra two CP, possibly, per battle round, if you use the right ones. Um, like, I don't see why I couldn't use... Um, reinforcements two times in a turn or even just once for free so that's um that's pretty awesome she also has a five plus invol and she is either really under costed or the next guy is um over costed because for five points less you can have a castellan this guy used to be 50 points he's still 50 points um he's a mediocre human he has poor leadership. He does not provide a leadership bonus. Um, see, neither does she. This this actually like this should be six plus, and this should be six plus um, for these two units. Um, that just irks me that our officers do not have better leadership stats than basic infantry. Um, I'm gonna carry on. He has all kinds of weapon options. There's nothing special there to look at. He just has weapons that you can expect on an officer. He can give out one order, one whole order to a regiment uh, unit, which is fine, except he's five points less than Ursicar, or sorry, Ursula, who uh, can give out two. And he gives your unit sustained hits one. Sustained hit doesn't stack, so it's just going to be one sustained hit bo um, ability bonus added to a unit, which isn't bad, but it's also not exciting. And while the unit is leading, or sorry, while the model's leading a unit, they can shoot in a turn they fell back. That's nice. But you're just shooting with guardsmen, honestly. Uh, this this guy can join Cadians, Infantry, or Kassergan. The only time I think this would be um, of note would be with Kassergan. In most cases, you know, Cadians aren't terrible either. But... It's just last guns shooting, and if you're falling back, there's a good chance you got beat up in a combat. Maybe you've been shot prior to that. You probably don't have many guys left anyways. Um, this guy's a pass. I mean, like, if he was 25, let's say 30 points. If he was 25 points cheaper than Ursula, um, I think that it would be fine. He would be just slightly more than half her points, and I think that would be fair for what he offers. He is half her value at best. So he's just overcosted. Um, I'm never going to use one unless I just literally need one more order and can't afford 10 more points for a uh, command squad. Ah, the tank commander. This guy here, he got hit hard. He's now 240 points. He's gone up like 70 points or something like that. It's like It's a lot. 75, I think. Um, he can have all the weapon choices, uh, all kinds of options over here. And because of the way points, they're not points, they're power level. The way power level works in this game is they've called it points, and then you just pick whatever you want, and there's no actual cost, meaning you just pick the best things. Sometimes a heavy bolter or a heavy flamer will be the best thing. I'm not going to say that's never the case. In almost all situations though you're better off to have um, a couple of multi meltas or plasma cannons and like a las cannon i just don't understand um the whole point system that's a whole different video but um yeah he gives you one order for a squadron this is where i would put the uh, extra order relic or enhancement is on this guy he's already 240 points make him 255 and get an extra order and his orders go 12 inches not six everybody else is a six inch or uh, uh sorry bubble either direction so i guess uh 12 inch bubble for orders 
this guy can go 12 inches in any direction. That's that's good. Um, you know, I guess it's also to balance out the fact that he can't be with a Vox, um, which a lot of times Voxes in the same unit are pretty easy to get for infantry, which actually stretches them to 24. I guess tank Voxes aren't as good. Uh, then he gets a very strange ability. Um, every Lehman Russ cannon comes with an ability. It's not quite the cannon, it's the tank itself, but because of the way they've broken it down, you buy a tank with a very specific turret, and you get an ability that goes with that turret. He doesn't get the benefit of the turret, as uh, rules as written, until they FAQ that and say, oh, he gets it. Uh, he does not get the benefit of that turret, so no rerolls to wound with a vanquisher, uh, no reroll to hit with a battle cannon if they're on an objective. He just gets the weapon he has with those stats. If he dies, which as the guy who's giving out orders and at the cost he is, he's probably going to die pretty quick, unfortunately, because um, he's going to be a target. On a 2+, plus when he dies, you get to make a shot. Um, actually, yes, now you get to make shots with all your weapons, as if it was your shooting phase, and as if it has full wounds. So, hitting on 4+, plus with um, a battle cannon. Or actually, to be fair, Demolisher Cannon. I think that's the only one worth putting on him. Because it's a very powerful weapon. And its bonus on the data sheet for the Demolisher is... Um, it's not one where you're going to need that bonus every turn. It's not baked into the price. It's more of just a, oh, it's nice to have. He gets to... A Demolisher can shoot in engagement range. Um, you lose that, but, you know, it's 220 points for that tank. So... It's the most expensive by a significant margin, um, and it, again, is just the one where you're losing the least by having that turret, so I think Demolisher, Laz Cannon, Double Melta is the way to go. And when he dies, you just, you know, maybe have driven him up into their army, he's dead, and then you go, oh, roll a die on a 2+, plus. you get to shoot all those guns, you pick a target, and you hopefully delete it on your way out. Um... This is just a stratagem from 9th edition that's been turned into his ability. It's good. Like, if you're going to lose a 200, you know, at this point, 55-point model, taking something, you know, like a Land Raider with you, that's awesome. You know, that that's a really nice, you know, F you on the way out. But you are literally losing the guy giving your orders, and you don't even guarantee that hit that that last shot um if you got your vengeful salute your death befitting an officer on the way out guaranteed that would buff this a little bit the fact that there's a uh, one in six chance you fail it that's i think i don't really understand that i mean this is a mediocre ability for him anyways he'd be better off with uh, two orders and something where he can um you know an aura or something where he buffed tanks around him, that would make more sense. This should have been a stratagem again. Um, I think paying 1 CP for this on any tank at the price we pay for them would have been good. I think having it tied to this one data sheet, which you could probably only afford one of if you're, you know, planning to buy other tanks. I don't know. I don't get it. I think this is... Uh, this needs to be changed, that's my opinion, but we'll see. I doubt we're going to see any change to that until our codex comes out, whenever that is. Um, and he's a Lehman Russ. Lehman Russ are all the same, I'll just mention this now. They have 10-inch movement, 11 toughness, 2 plus save, 13 wounds, 7 leadership. Again, he's an officer, but he's no good, uh, sorry, no better than anybody else. And OC3. These are tough. Um, they're going to be hard to shift. And up until basically Laz Cannon, or better... They're wounding you on, like, a 4 or a 5. So, pretty much a 5, usually, because I don't think there's any strength 11 weapons. Uh, so, toughness-wise, tanks are good. Points-wise, a little overcosted. <clears throat> Next, we have two types of command squads. These guys are the platoon command. This one here can go with, like, your catechins, death corps, or infantry. It cannot join cadians. They have their own. We'll get to them in a minute. Um, there's three stat lines because you can have your commander and veterans or commander veterans and a heavy weapons team um their infantry again you know no better leadership on him 
that's a shame. Leadership is a big shame in this army list. Um, I hope we get a change to six on the officers. And, um, yeah. So, picking all kinds of weapons. They have a whole list of things. I'm not going to go through all that. But they can have a lot of different options of weapons and war gear, like banners and all that. Um, you just got to look over here. It'll explain how it works. And it tells you what you can have. Either a, ga a leader and four guardsmen, a leader, two guardsmen, and a heavy weapon. So, command structure. This is an aura. While friendly platoon units are within six inches, um, they can take stratagems even if they're battle shocked. I think that's very strong. Uh, this is where their use comes in, um, is their abilities. These guys here can give out orders, one order, two regiments. They can provide you stratagems even if you're battle shocked and they provide these other bonuses uh, so master vox they can give out orders up to 24 inches away they can provide a medipack for a six plus feel no pain in the whole unit but that's that's awesome and a regimental standard plus one to objective control so if you take a banner and a medic and a vox caster you are giving up you know a lot of this, you're just going to have basically like, you know, a plasma gun and a grenade launcher or something, sniper rifle. Uh, if you're sitting back, maybe flamers and grenade launchers if you're moving up or plasma. And they're getting an extra objective control in the unit. So these guys in total have five OC. One, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five. But the unit they're with might have 20. If there's 20 guys in that unit, you have 45 objective control base. And the models now go up by one. So you get an extra 25. So you're at um, 70 objective control with these 25 guys. That's solid. Um, you are not getting shifted off of there with somebody else's unit coming in. As long as they hold the line, as long as they don't battle shock, they're still going to be there holding that objective so that's really good uh, and again orders always good and these are cheap like 60 points uh, this is the other thing again 60 points for this all those bonuses or 50 points for the same one order on a castellan and whoop de doo you get sustained hits and um i already forget the other thing he gives because it's not that great yeah you can shoot when you fall back i mean do not take this guy unless you, like, literally need to fill the points and you're out of, um, you know, other officer types. Like, if you're out of officers and you still somehow think you need an order, then you take this guy. Um, And then we go down to Cadians. They can only join Cadian shock troops. I really wish they could join Kasserkin. I can see why they can't, but at the same time, um, it would be nice just because, you know, both are Cadian units. And essentially, these are the exact same thing. There is no real difference in what they can take for weapons and equipment. They can have all the same upgrades. They give out one order. But they have Cadia stands. In 9th edition, we had a relic, the finial of the something. It, it was a banner that would basically say, you cannot affect my roles with your abilities. Um, and it was pretty good. And quite powerful. And they have that built in. So when this unit has a Cadian officer, this guy right here, you can ignore any or all any or all modifiers to the characteristics of this model in the unit, of the models in this unit, to any role or test made for models. Um, so not saving throws, it says. But basically, if you have a buff, so like plus one to hit or whatever, oh, I'll allow that. Oh, I'm shooting at this, minus one to hit, I'll ignore that. Uh, that's that's great. Um, Cadians are a lot less auto-take in this edition, I think, uh, because of the way things have balanced out. But that's the reason to take Cadians, are these guys right here. Um, having a squad or two with these this ability is super nice. Um, it means that there might be targets that are otherwise quite difficult to cause wounds to, you can now ignore that because of this guy, and that's pretty nice. Iron Hand Strachan, he is a leader for Kadich Jungle Fighters. He's an epic hero. You get just one of these guys. He gives out two regiment saves. 
our regiment orders. He has a four plus invulnerable, so that's really good on a guardsman. Um, he has got an auto shotgun, which is not a bad weapon. He's got a plasma pistol, just a standard plasma. And he has a biotic arm with the Devil's Claw. He has anti-monster 4 plus, 6 attacks, 2 weapon skill, 2 plus weapon skill, 6 strength, minus 2 AP, and 2 damage. So you go swinging at monsters, and you're wounding them on a 4 plus instead of like 5 or 6, depending on how tough they are. And at minus 2 AP, that's pretty strong for 10th edition. Two damage. Three would have been nicer because then he would have been just a big old like beat stick to go beat down Carnifexes and the like. But I can understand why they only went with two. Still really nice. If you can get hitting on two plus, six attacks, probably get, again, five. You might even use a reroll. And then four plus uh, to wound them. You know, 50-50, you're going to get like, you know, on a good turn, you can get like four wounds at minus two on like a Carnifex. Um, Getting a couple of those through, he only takes four, but I mean, for a Carnifex, that's almost half their wounds, I think. Uh, I think they only have, like, ten wounds. So, just him alone knocking a Carnifex down almost half its wounds, that's quite good. Um, he's also Scout Six Inches. That's just to go with Catachins. They're also Scout Six Inches. And he has Cold Steel and Courage. So, when he's with a unit... The weapons equipped by models in that unit have lethal hits. That means you are, um, or sorry, melee weapons. That means you're not only shooting um, and getting lethal hits if you stay still on a six. Now, if you go into combat, move or not, you can get lethal hits when you're fighting. Um, so again, these guys are monster hunters. You send 20 catechins um, into a monster, like a Carnifex. And every six out of those 20 guys attacking is an automatic wound. You skip the part that's hard. So, and then any hits you get are still, you know, going to wound on a six. So, pretty solid. Um, I like this guy. And I like the model. I have him somewhere. Um, now, I guess, is the time to paint him up and give him a squad of my catechins. Next, we have Primaris Psyker. Uh, psychic, psychic stuff is very different in this edition. You have um, basically no psychic phase, if you haven't heard that. And you just have abilities that are psychic powers. Uh, sometimes there's a small test, and then you have psychic weapons. And they're just built into the profile. So, standard profile, nothing special about him again. He's just a slightly better human. He has a Laz pistol. It's a Laz pistol. And then he has a Psychic Maelstrom, which is Blast. Uh, in this edition, Blast is plus one hit for every, uh, or plus one attack for every five models in the target. Devastating Wounds, meaning if you roll a six to wound, it's a, a mortal wound. And it's Psychic, so there might be times when that uh, comes up. You'd have to see what you're shooting at, basically. Um, mostly this won't do anything, other than just tell you it's a Psychic attack. Uh, so 18 inch range, die 6 attacks, again, plus 1 for each 5 models. 3 plus to hit, 6 strength, minus 2 AP and 1 damage. I would like this to be 2, but this is 2 down here. I just wish this was 2 damage and 3. Um, same thing, exactly the same as before, except now it's hazardous, meaning that if you choose to do the focus version, you get more shots, a base of 3 plus die 6, and... Everything's the same, other than you also get one more damage. So, more attacks that are going to do more damage. Um, but at then, at the end, you roll a die, and on a 1, he takes a wound. Um, so, pretty good trade-off. It's just that he only has 3 wounds, and you have to keep that in mind for this ability here. He also has a force weapon. Um, 3 attacks that are 4 plus to hit. 6 strength, minus 1 AP, and 3, or sorry, D3 damage. Quite strong. Um... You know, it, it's a good amount of damage. It's not You don't want to get him in combat if you can avoid it, but it's nice to have. Um, if he's with a unit, they have a 4 plus feel no pain against psychic attacks. Mostly this will not come into effect, but, um, you know, you are going to face armies that have some psychic powers. That just means that unit probably won't get shot by them. And you're going to face some armies that have a lot of psychic attacks, like Thousand Suns, Eldar, 
um, I think Tyranids and uh, things like that. A lot of chaos. And they might just not get targeted because, again, 4 plus feel no pain is pretty good. Or they'll be forced to actually use multiple um, psychic powers and more shooting attacks to get rid of a unit that might be key. And that's if you don't throw on a psychic barrier. So at the start of your opponent's shooting phase, you roll a die six. On a one, he takes die three mortal wounds. He might just die. That sucks. Um, I really wish it was just one. But um, I think that's that, that's the big downside to this guy. This should have been just one. That's a little bit too much because he only has three. Maybe give him four wounds or something then. But anyways, doesn't matter. It is what it is. On a two plus, those guys in that unit have a four plus involved. And again, if it's a psychic attack, they also have four plus feel no pain. So you can have a very, very strong unit. Guardsmen have a five plus save. In cover, it's four plus. Um, if you're not in cover or they have good AP, now you have a four plus invault. I mean, a four plus invault at all times is that's that's really good. That's Terminator good. Uh, except now you have twenty of those little guys. There, there are twenty guys that have Terminator level defense, and um, yeah, like this is just this is good. And then you get again, you could have um, you're gonna have probably feel no pain six plus if you have a command squad with a medic. And there's other ways to boost them too, like say the Krieg who can get die three guys back. Some of them are gonna die. You'll get a few back. And this guy can join again anybody um, that everybody else could join um, or anybody else could pick from. But he also gets Tempest Scions, uh, which is one that's more rare to, to join. Next, we have Gaunt's Ghosts. Um, I love that Gaunt's Ghosts has been added to the game. I really dislike how they've been added. Just having a small, random half side, you know, it's like a kill team, essentially, in your army with some, you know, various weapons, which are still just pretty regular weapons. Um, you know, Laz Carbines are fine. Um, uh, Ron's Laz, or sorry, yeah, Ron's Laz Carbine, which is also sustained hits. They're still just Laz guns. They, you know, they're three strength. They're one damage. Um, you know, they're not going to be doing a lot of damage other than with, um, Larkin's, um, Hotshot Laz gun and Bragg's autocannon, although he sucks at shooting. So you got to make sure the unit stays still. And even then he only hits on a four plus. Um, yeah, I mean, th these guys are not going to do a lot of shooting damage. And they're going to do not that much in combat either, because just strength three. So I don't see these guys doing much other than maybe finding like a lone operative and just ganking them real quick. That's about what I could see them doing. Or if you get them into a good position, you might go after something uh, small um, and not very tough, a small command unit or something. Again... It's really dependent on how you use them. I think these guys are, these guys are very situational. Um, they have better saves than... Uh, oh, sorry, he has a better save. They don't. But they do have an extra wound. These guys have a 6-plus leadership for some reason. Um, I almost feel like these guys should be 5-plus because they are so specialized. But, yeah, I mean, just Guardsmen. You get, like, 6, gu six guys. I don't think it's... Um, a unit I would be jumping up to use. But man, they look good. Anyways, they get to fight first. Uh, meaning that if they go into combat, they just get to fight first. Just like it says. Which could be very helpful. Um, but if you're going against anything that's, you know, Space Marine tough, these guys aren't going to do too much for you. Uh, then they have Infiltrators, which gives you the infiltration bonuses in the, the game. They have Lone Operative. That's nice. It means that basically when they get shot at over 12 inches, they're at like minus one to hit, I think it is. Um, so that's a solid little bonus. That's their camo cloaks that work, sort of. And stealth, which again, or, no, sorry, lone operative is you can't be shot at over 12 inches. And stealth is like, minus one to hit? I, I forget offhand what some of these rules mean. I st I'm still learning stuff. And, um, well, basically I haven't used stealth or lone operatives yet. Um, so I just haven't got those rules stuck in my head quite well enough. Um. Voice of command. He can give out two orders. So this guy could be there just for orders. That's an option. Um, I still think 
I would not get too, you know, excited about it, but it's cool. I guess the one reason this this unit could be cool is if you actually have old Tanith models from the early 2000s. Having these guys and all of your infantry platoons are Tanith, um, that could be nice to have a flavorful army. Uh, they have camo cloaks, so when a range attack targets them, they have cover. They always have cover. Um, and covert stealth team. At the end of your opponent's turn, if this unit is not in engagement range, uh, you can remove them from the battlefield, put them in reinforcements, and bring them back on your next movement phase, nine inches away. Um, if you use these guys as some sort of like, you know, I keep them in the back out of you know, sight and stuff. Nobody's shooting them. You can't see them because they're lone operative. And then, like, you go, okay, now he's cleared out his backfield enough that these guys can go run and take an objective that way next turn. Um, I think that's nice. It also forces your opponent to keep stuff in the back to protect their home home objective more. So that's um, that's their probably best use. I think that's the way I would use them if I was going to. I would just have to build and paint my guys first because they're still in the box. Um, and I got gets a 5 plus save. Yeah. Very situationally good. I think you could do some stuff with them, though. Uh, regimental attaches. These guys here are just three basic dudes who each give one special uh, um, bonus. Also, this guy has a force weapon. Um, or well, astropath staff. It's, it's a force weapon. Uh, so you have an artillery commander. You pick an enemy unit within 30 inches that he can see. And... Uh, let me read this here again. Uh, that's not been selected until the end of the phase. Blast weapons equipped by friendly Astra Militarum. Artillery units have sustained hits one when targeting that unit. So you cannot use this with, say, um, the Field Ordnance Battery Malice Rocket Launcher, I think it's called, because it comes with sustained hits. But you can give it to the Bombast, you can give it to Manticores, um, or whatever else doesn't have sustained hits anyways. Um, then you have Aeronautica Commander. In your shooting phase, you select an enemy unit within 30 inches, and until the end of the phase, each time a friendly Astro Militarum aircraft shoots at it, you get to add one to the hit roll. I will likely never use him, because our aircraft costs 200 points. Um, a Valkyrie at 200 points. I don't even think Vendettas are in the book anymore. Uh, it's, it's just... You'd have to know up ahead of time what you were going to be facing exactly and how you could use that so um, right off the bat I think that guy's not super useful the artillery guy's useful uh, but he's not and you do have to buy them together all three and the divination from the uh, astropath enemy units that are set up um, on the battlefield as reinforcements can't be set up within 12 inches um, so Basically, they have to be 13 inches away, or well, over 12 inches away, 12.1, meaning they can't charge you if they have some benefit to uh, coming in from reserves and charging, uh, which I think most things do. I think everybody can come in and charge, so they can't do that, uh, unless they have a bonus to their charge range. And they also will be out of range for any like shorter range weapons, so, you know, that's that's good. That guy's nice. Um he is basically going to give you a bubble, maybe on one flank or in your rear to protect you. But again, you have to buy them all, but they're cheap. It's like 40 points to buy all three, and at least these two you'll find use for. Um, if you don't bring artillery, and you don't bring planes, you just have this guy, it still might be worth it, because it does take away a strategic option from your opponent. Um, oh, also, they have to join a command squad. That's the other thing, too. Uh, they join a command squad, specifically. Then you get Ogren bodyguards. There's two kinds. There's the basic and there's Nork. So the basic, it's an Ogren. He can have a 4 plus invol or one extra wound. Obviously the 4 plus invol. Uh, you pick an officer. He hangs out with him and the officer has feel no pain. And while the model's unit contains an officer that has lost one or more wounds, each time this model makes a melee attack, you get plus one to hit and plus one to wound. Um, so he's hitting on threes, meaning he's wounding on twos. And at seven strength or um, eight strength, he's probably wounding on twos as well, unless you're fighting a tank. So this guy here, oh, and he has Feel No Pain 6+, plus if you don't for some reason otherwise have it. 
very good unit to have thrown in. And Nork Dead Dog, same idea, uh, except he uh, has, instead of the plus one to hit and wound, he just has a really good headbutt. Die three plus three mortal wounds on a six. Die three mortal wounds two to five, and I think nothing on a one if they're in engagement range. So I'm going to stop this video here. I've gone through all of the HQ units. Um, I will come back and put another one with infantry. And maybe I'll do infantry and elite because there's not that much in the infantry section. Um, so hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, if you have any thoughts or comments, leave them down below. If there's ways that you want to use these guys or have used them that you think that I haven't thought of or uh, would be something that other people might find useful, please share that in the comments. And uh, yeah, thanks very much and have yourselves a great day.